and welcome to another lesson by No Pens Had Pens. This is lesson number six. Uh, today we're going to be covering uh, we're going to be covering harmonics and pitch bends. So uh, we've already covered lots of things in the previous videos, such as uh, accents, dynamics, the scale, different rhythms, uh, the touch technique, of course, most importantly. Uh, now we're going to do the harmonics and the pitch bend. All right, what shall we start with? Shall we start with the harmonics? Let's do the harmonics, okay? You'll notice I do a quite a special double-handed um, tech here, a technique here, in order to get the harmonic. And it's, uh, it looks harder than it actually is. So what you do is, uh, for the sake of this example, take your left hand, right, and pick your middle finger. It's worth noting, um, you can do this with either hand. So it works. Um, doing the pressure with your one hand and uh, slapping with the other hand or vice versa. So it's up to you. But anyway, get, we're gonna use our left hands for now. Get your middle finger of your left hand and get the bony tip of it, i.e. The, the tip at the very end there, there, and press that down at what would be 12, three, six, nine o'clock here, okay? You need to apply some sort of, um, an amount of, I call it pinpoint pressure because you're using the very bony tip, pinpoint of your middle finger. Apply down some pressure, and with your right hand middle finger, uh, fingertip, because on the shoulder tones uh, we use our fingertips, I do anyway, just uh, experiment striking the note. And what you can do is experiment applying different amounts, of, uh, different amounts of pressure with your left hand before you get to, um, well, that would be a pitch bend. If you were to hit the note and consistently uh, press and release your left hand at the same time, continuously, you would get a pitch bend, ooh, ah, 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 that kind of thing. So you can hear that, okay? Now, for the harmonic, it is strictly uh, one particular note we're looking for. So if your tonic is here, okay? You can get two harmonics for every oval shaped note. Specifically, and it's specifically oval shaped notes which give you two harmonics. A harmonic, by the way, what is a harmonic? Um, every note is, belongs to a certain frequency and it's got um, sibling frequencies above and below it. And it's all related to this, um, uh, is it the golden ratio? I think it is, something special like that. It's very mathematical. But um, you don't need to know all the harmonics. All you need to know is that for each of the notes on the hand pen, you can get a fifth and an octave above the original note. A fifth is uh, five notes above, and an octave is eight notes above. So this is your fifth. La, and this is your octave. La, la. Your fundamental. La. Okay, that's, that's your fundamental, just means your tonic, means your first note, okay? So that's your first note, that's your fifth, that's your octave. It's a little technical, you might be wondering why do I need to know this? Uh, why do I need to know harmonics at all? You don't, but if you want to um, expand on your techniques on the hand pan, you want to incorporate something a little more interesting, this is something for you. Uh, let me give you some context, because at this point you're probably wondering how can you actually incorporate these. You could be playing. So obviously you, it takes some time to get those harmonics. So you don't really want to be making semiquavers, i.e. quarter notes of them or anything which is a, at a fast tempo. But anywhere where there's a little bit of space to breathe, a cheeky little um, harmonic might be quite effective. So how do you do those? I just taught you how you do the fifth actually. Even though it's a pitch bend, uh, it's actually a harmonic. So pitch bends um, are the same technique. You apply pressure with your left hand at what would be nine o'clock and then you strike at six o'clock like this. Right, I just did a pitch bend again, but a harmonic would just be keep your left hand at the same pressure point, same amount of pressure, and you just strike at six o'clock. 
that should get you your fifth. If you hear a note like this, it won't be as clear as obviously the actual notes themselves, but you are able to improve the um, improve the sound uh, clarity over time. Remember, the pressure point for the harmonic isn't forced. It's just a very gentle press. It's just like a placement of your left hand. And that will give you the harmonic. If you press too hard, you're going to bend the note higher. But you don't want to be high, you want to be perfectly at that octave. And that's where you just relax your hand and make sure the pressure is there. There's your fifth. For the octave, you apply the pressure at what would be six o'clock. With your right hand again, strike it three o'clock. And again, experiment. You may need to move your middle finger of the left hand closer in towards the ding or further away from in order to improve the actual sound you're making. And that's all down to personal preference and ability. So I'm getting that pretty comfortably. I wouldn't say I'm halfway between the ding and the rim there, or the shoulder note. I'm closer to the ding by say an eighth. It's not very much, but that happens to be my sweet spot. Not right in the middle, even though in the middle it works. Um, I get a much better sound about five eighths of the way um, from the rim, the outer end, edge to the inside edge of the ding. But it's up to you. So try that. Pressure at nine o'clock, strike at six o'clock for the fifth. Pressure at six o'clock, strike at three o'clock for the octave. I always do a little double slap. Um, and the technical term for that would be an aki akachura. Uh, they're just basically two quick notes before the actual note you do. Why do people do them? I do it personally because, well, I've done it so many times now it's comfortable to do that. But it also fills in that empty gap, which would otherwise be empty because it takes time to get your harmonic because you've got to press, you've got to press down and that doesn't even sound the note. The, the actual note sounding comes from your right hand. So it's up to you what you do um, leading up to the harmonic. But that is the basic technique right there. And that's on the ding. Now, it will get a little harder because note that it's much easier to play the harmonics on the ding. Uh, pick another note, for example, um, over here. And it's the same concept. You apply pressure at the 90 degree angle to the left with your left hand. And with your right hand, strike the, the next uh, quarter hour with your right hand. So that's your, that's your uh, f uh, fundamental. Your octave is always going to be three o'clock, depending on the shape of the oval. So this is the, uh, the oval. Uh, we will draw this for you. This is a note, right? Okay. Now, if... Uh, well, Let's assume the little pinpoint pressure where you press down with your bony finger is denoted by this uh, empty circle, right? And the strike is an X, okay? So the strike here, if I do like this, equals an octave, okay? This represents the, um, the bony finger, the pressure point, pinpoint pressure at six o'clock and the strike at three o'clock, okay? That will give you your octave. Whereas if you have the, um, again, you have your strike here. We'll rub these out. Alternatively, as I was saying, if you have your strike here, pinpoint pressure at nine o'clock, i.e. here, you're gonna get your fifth, all right? And whether you want your octave or fifth is up to you or down to the actual um, uh, the music itself. Uh, remember, it's based on the oval, okay? So not all the ovals are directly perpendicular to your body, i.e. pointing upwards. You can see the fifth and sixth notes are rotated completely 90 degrees. So all of a sudden, this is your octave by striking it. Well, you think it's six o'clock, but it's actually striking at three o'clock, all right? So just remember, oval shape and you strike on the right gives you an octave. Uh, you strike on the bottom gives you your fifth. Vice versa, if you strike on the left here, that's going to give you an octave. 
or if you strike on the top, that's also going to give you a fifth. So it is, um, there's a line of symmetry here. It applies to these as well, okay? So you can experiment with that around the, the, um, the note. So how would you denote that? How would you draw that on some sheet music? Let me show you. In our case, if we provide you practice material on five staves as usual, every note can have up to can have two harmonics. So we're not missing any notes here. So let's assume using the ninth note. Now I didn't mention this in an earlier uh, video, but if the note is above the middle line, the stems go down. And I don't know how people are remembering these things, but an analogy for this might be, and I've just made this up on the spot, is here's your, um, here's your middle line, right? And if you're swimming down below, below the middle line, your legs are going to be up. So the stems have to go up, for example. So we will draw uh, here, say, note five, okay? But if you're above, you're coming up for air. Let's assume there's air here. So the notes, the stems are going to go down. Um, the middle note can be both stem down or stem up. It really depends um, on, the, the, on the situation. But typically, it's up. Okay, but we will, we will keep it consistent. So we'll put a ding here as well. I didn't draw the time signature, which is most important right now because you need to know it's four beats in the bar. I'll draw the repeat marks. This is just standard procedure because we're going to repeat. All right, now, how would I draw um, the note octaves? Now, on guitar, they draw an open string kind of thing, uh, an open uh, circle above the, above the note. Uh, and if I remember correctly, if I remember correctly, the specific harmonic they're looking for is again indicated by the uh, the number itself. So I'm going to draw an octave there. Uh, let's do a fifth there, octave, and a fifth. So notice how there's four separate notes here. Nine, nine, uh, note nine. Note, note five, note one, note one again. But you're being asked to play the octave, right? These aren't zeros, these are supposed to be open circles. Uh, octave on the first note, fifth on the second, octave on the third note, fifth on the fourth. So ninth note, let's find that first. You want the octave. Now you know that the octave is you have to strike at a three or six o'clock in relation to the um, oval. So where is that? Three or six. So for me, my striking hand is my right hand. In this situation, it's much more comfortable. So I'll apply the pressure at six o'clock and strike at three o'clock. And that's exactly what we're being asked to do here. Play the octave of the ninth note. Now, I didn't mention it, but the higher the notes, the harder it is to create the octave. So it will take practice. You need to find that sweet spot. And that comes with practice. Notice how some people can go all the way up to the actual um, uh, concave section of the note itself to, to um, try to get that harmonic. It seems to me my sweet spot is closer to the upper rim. Different for every hand pan, different for every person. So that's the first note, octave harmonic of the ninth note. Now here, the, third, uh, the second line we know is the fifth, remember, because the bottom line is the third note. The second line is the fifth note. We've got a little ant here to say hello. Um, so let's find the, th the fifth note. So that's two, three, fifth, five, okay? <clears throat> and they're asking us to play the, <coughs> the fifth. Now we know that the fifth is played by striking at six or 12 o'clock. So obviously with the fifth note of the handpan, the oval is facing that way, okay? It's, it's, um, it's no longer as it was with the ninth note or the ding note, it's facing that way. So where is, 
Um, I have to strike at 12 or 6 to get the 5th. So that means the closest, the most convenient one for me, because I don't want to reach over to get 9 o'clock, is to strike 12 o'clock. So what I'm going to do is, to get that 5th, which I know I have to strike here or here, 12 or 6 o'clock, is I'm going to strike um, 12 o'clock, okay? And I can either I can either put my pressure with the alternate hand at 9 o'clock or 6 o'clock. I'm just going to put it at 6 o'clock because it is closer. So here you go, uh, that 5th note uh, with the 5th harmonic would be... Okay. Now these might be tricky to get your head around, but just remember use the reference of the oval and which gives you the fifth and the octave. You get your octave when you strike at the left or right hand sides, i.e. three and nine o'clock. You get your fifth when you strike at the top and bottom sides, i.e. twelve and six o'clock. We want the fifth, so we're striking at twelve o'clock. Okay? The octave of 9 is you strike at 3 or 6, I'm striking at 3 o'clock. Alright, then we've got the ding, and they're asking for the octave. So we just went over this, so the octave is here, and then they're asking for the fifth. So those last two notes are pretty straightforward, it's the same note, you know it's... if the tempo is... Right? Playing them individually, it's, playing the harmonics individually is one thing putting two next to each other and playing them well and perfect, um, i.e. consistently, is another skill. So you've got to practice those. Now this is quite a challenge actually. This is probably something which should be in the, the extra materials of the practice material for this lesson. But let me see if it, even I can do it. So it's octave of the ninth, and maybe you can even do this, uh, fifth of the fifth, and then octave of the ding and then fifth of the ding so if the tempo is one two three four it's going to be something like now if you miss it just keep going like i did so i'm not really getting the fifth note so that's probably because I'm playing too fast and I haven't practiced getting the fifth note by itself. If I, if I can get it at all. So if that's not working at one angle, try to apply the pinpoint pressure at, at another angle. So it is there, it's just about there. I find if I apply, I just found that if I apply a little more pressure with my left hand, and the set and the strike also was a little greater with my right hand, I could get that fifth. So if we try that one more time, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. So I forgot what to do there for. One, two, three, four. I got a good fifth just then. Got it. Now it's the thing which is playing up. That was a good one. That might be too fast, okay? If it is, just slow it down, get your metronome out, metronome out, which I know everyone's got right now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Was that a bit slappy? It can sound a bit slappy on the ding. You might have to be softer. Three, four. Actually, on the notes around the ding, you might find that doing it much quicker and slap uh, on the actual tip of your ha uh, finger this time as opposed to the creases, uh, you'll get a better harmonic. And I could practice this all day, but that's what you should be doing. So. Try this out, 
check out the practice material and if you're interested, try to get good at harmonics. I will show you this. Um, so I use my middle finger a lot for the fifth and then my thumb comes in, applies that pinpoint pressure quickly to do the, um, to do the octave. So, I mean, that works for largely the top three notes because my hand is used to that position. I don't really do it. I don't really do it there at all. I probably could if I practiced. And there's your pitch bend. all around your hand pan and make sure they're right unlike I was um, for the first few notes of those so thanks for watching this video and uh, we'll see you at the next one <laughs>